Aaron? Yeah. And Barry? Here. And I am here as well. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I should call your name yes, or no, not. That's, Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no. And just for the, the public's edification, Mayor Girding is a little under the weather tonight, so I'm standing in his, in his place. Uh, Councilor Barry will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. That brings us to the recognition of Indigenous people, our Native Ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Endekina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, <coughs> Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabek, the people who have stewarded Nandakina throughout the generations. Brings us to agenda item number four, which is public hearings. Our first public hearing is on ordinance number 6-25 to amend chapter 13D, noise and nuisance control, section 13D4, exclusions and exemptions to add section 13D4C waivers, which authorize the city manager to grant waivers to this ordinance. Does anybody want to make comment on this ordinance change? Seeing none, that brings us to agenda item number five, which is comments by visitors. The Summers Road City Council welcomes comments from visitors. A time limit of not more than five minutes shall be in effect unless council uh, chooses to suspend rules to allow for more time. At no time will anyone enter into a debate with city councilors, the city manager, department heads. Are there any comments by visitors this evening? Flip a coin. Good evening and welcome. Just make sure the mic's on. Identify uh, your name and where you live. Thank you. Ron LaHuya, Ward 4, also a uh, planning board chairman. I just wanted to comment tonight on resolution, I believe it's 125 on the appointments uh, provision. Uh, I believe like this evening you're going to have two resignations from the HDC and before we start changing the rules on appointments perhaps we should concentrate on filling the open positions we have those tonight and also uh, the planning board has three open positions and in the past 10 years ago I believe they came up with the uh, idea to do the application process and before that, I believe it was just uh, word of mouth or whatever. I believe the application process is a happy medium, and the counselors can use the information to contact whatever individuals they want to uh, without having to, again, pass a new resolution. So that's my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate that. Good evening, Richard Brooks, 18 Linden Street, Ward 1. Um, I put in a petition that's titled Petition to Extend and Improve the Public Meeting Notice Requirements. Obviously, I see it's on the agenda tonight. Um, I collected over 120 signatures. I think it was 124 I turned in. I believe one or two might have been discounted for in, in eligible but you know to read it or whatever but um that is double what i had to collect by my math it was 61 signatures i had to collect it's based on one percent of the people that voted in the last presidential election which was around 6,100. so that's where i come up with the 61 that we need um i could have easily collected more standing out there in front of the uh, polling places on election day I simply just ask people, would you be interested in signing a petition to improve our public meeting notices? And most people were saying yes before I get that sentence out. Um, of course, then you get, on the other hand, the people that just don't want to be bothered, they either ignore you and like have blinders on, and then you have the people who just, no thank you, because clearly they just don't want to interact with anybody, regardless of what the topic is. Um, while I was talking to them, I always made them aware of what the state law requirements are which is a 24-hour notice except in the case of emergency and ha that has to be posted two places in the city as well as published which of course published goes on the website channel 22 you can count either one i guess and posted is on our bulletin board down here in city hall and over in the library which obviously 
makes it tough to really find unless you go looking for it. And everybody that was, you know, as they're signing this and so on, a lot of them are like, why not seven days? You know, and that's exactly what I've asked for in this too. I, I think it's reasonable. Um, you look at like the planning board, which has a meeting scheduled on the 16th. Their deadline is the second, two weeks prior to to get on the agenda. So seven days still allows seven days to create that agenda before it's actually posted out in public somehow. Um, I'd also like to see it done better, a more proactive way, whether it be social media, email, text alert, something that reaches out to people rather than have people having to go look for it. If just like you can sign up for a text alert about storm or school closings, it, it's just a way that it reaches out to you that way if someone sees it you know they can sign up for it. it's their choice then and if they see something that interests them it would give them the t opportunity to make an appearance send in correspondence whatever the case may be so um, I hope you guys will all consider this it's in today's day and age technology wise I think this is an easy thing to ask for and I think it'll certainly help get people more involved and maybe even with our boards that we all know it are shorthanded. Uh, just like our election officials, why not put them on the website too? Just like the city council and school board is presented on channel 22 so you know they exist, you see a face with it. Why not do that with election officials too? Maybe it would make people realize these are positions you can sign up for in only a couple days a year. So uh, just a little tangent on that, but please consider passing this petition that I put forward. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any further comments by visitors this evening, please? Good evening. My name is Bonnie McNair. I'm in Ward 1 on 11 Noble Street. I am also the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, good evening, Council Members. I've just prepared a quick statement. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Last week, during a well-attended member morning connection that the chamber held at fo Folded in Summersworth, I had the difficult task of sharing news that I've wrestled with for quite some time. Our chamber is in dire, dire financial need. And tragically, we are at risk of closing at this time. Sharing this news was not an easy decision to make. Um, but the time has now come for me to do whatever it takes to save it. Over the past year, I've connected with countless people in our region who share my love for this community and my commitment to strengthening our local economy. I know that despite the challenges we are facing, um, there's hope. Uh, our chamber can absolutely have a bright future, but we can't do this alone. Uh, last week, we, we launched a formal Save the Chamber campaign, and tonight I'm asking for your support as my city council. Um, to where I'm sorry <laughs> I'm asking for your support as City Council to keep the chamber operational uh, we need donations we need sponsorships we need new and renewed memberships to secure our future and just as importantly we need help spreading the wor word to rally the community behind this effort um, without the city's support it is a hard sell to get a business or multiple businesses or multiple people behind this effort um, is a statistic that small communities with small businesses thrive when there is a strong Chamber of Commerce. Um, looking ahead, we're not just trying to survive, we're planning for growth. I've reimagined all of our programming to be more relevant and beneficial to local businesses, and we're launching new initiatives like the Holistic Wellness Fair, which is coming up next weekend. Um, our now second 3K fun run, which is to be costumed this time around, and our inaugural Women of Influence Summit, which celebrates the women leaders in this area. Uh, we're also embarking on a full rebranding of the chamber with the help from Darcy Creative out of Portsmouth, um, who has very generously um, embarked on this pro bono. Um, and we are aiming to unveil our new identity at our Winter Gala. I don't know if anybody saw the renaming campaign that went out last week. We got quite a lot of really great back and forth started with that, and I got some great ideas. Um, and you'll all find out what the new chamber is going to be at the Winter Gala. I s hope you all come. 
Um, we have plans for a street festival to highlight our region, and we want to bring back a farmer's market, the Main Street program, and other community-centered programs and projects. But to achieve this, we need the support of our city, our neighboring towns, and our businesses. And it starts with Summersworth. Um, tomorrow morning at 745, I'll be joining Mike Pomp on Fra Frank FM to talk more about our plans and how the community can get involved. I invite you to tune in, and most importantly, to join us in saving the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for time and consideration. I very strongly believe that together we can ensure that the Chamber continues to serve this incredible community. Point of honor, Your Honor. If I could just ask the speaker right. to, if I could ask the speaker to um, uh, leave a phone number. You have a phone number so the people at home, if they want to donate or something like that, we can get in touch with. I tried to call and because I have a donation for my company, I just I have the wrong number. I apologize. Yeah. So our office number, um, anytime you want to get a hold of me, is 603-749-7175. And if you go to thefallschamber.com, I can, um, there's links to get in touch with me via email there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time tonight. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Seeing none, that'll bring us to agenda item number six, which is the consent calendar. The chair will entertain a motion on the consent calendar. Councillor Pepin. Councilor Pepper moves to accept the consent calendar as presented. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Cameron. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent calendar manifest by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Brings us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by city councilors. Any comments by councilors this evening? I'll start with Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this weekend, I had the pleasure of um, uh, going over to the fire department for their uh, fire pre prevention uh, week, a month. Uh, and it was an excellent job put together by the chief, the assistant chief, and all the firefighters there and whoever else was involved with it. Um, stations looking good. It was nice. It was refreshments. And they had people from the state doing um, some fire. You could put out a, a little fire thing on a, on a wheel that spun around. It was pretty cool. And I just want to say thanks to the chief and his department. Thank you, Council. Councilor. Further comments by Councilors. Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Thank you. Um, I want to thank the community members that came to speak with us today. Um, I will. I know that um, we are to discuss two of the issues that were brought up on uh, on our agenda. So I'll reserve my comments on those things for later. Um, but I want to thank uh, Bonnie. <laughs> Who is talking to another counselor right now? Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, thanks. I just I love the chamber. Um, no, I I do appreciate that, and I'm sure that we can find ways in the city to help spread the word. Thank you for coming tonight and um, just letting us know that's a lot of really exciting things happening. And I know that you do a lot of this. Um, because you love the community and you know you're just making it happen so um, I'll be excited to hear you on the radio tomorrow and uh, excited to go to your winter gala okay further comments by councilors councilor Pepin and I saw you next and then councilor Barry okay. thank you a um, couple a couple of meetings ago there was uh, something that happened in the City Council that's got my mind thinking and since uh, it had to do with the councillors being able to campaign for themselves using this seat up here. Um, and it was pretty clear there that we can't use the seat up here. And I was on, on the council when we did that. And the reason why we did it is kind of like we felt it was kind of unfair for people that were running against us or whatever don't have the, 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 the things that we have here that public can see us the public can judge us for on, on our actions and how we conduct ourselves how we vote and on certain things and it's we didn't want to use this seat as a place to campaign for and hopefully discourage somebody else from possibly not getting a vote because he doesn't have the same opportunity as we do to give our, our presentations or whatever so that's kind of like the reason why that was put there uh, there was a little clause in there because people, some of the council members were worried about um, the councilors not, not being able to say anything. So we kind of like left it up. So if it came to public comment, 
that the council could come down when it was closing comments for the public, that he could come down and, and basically say what he wanted to say in front of the in front of the, the television, so everybody else could hear it and see it. Um, what happened at the that last council meeting was a curve that I didn't see coming. I don't think anybody saw it coming the way it did. Um, personally, I don't feel that our seats up here should be used for any type of campaigning. And I, I just like to go through a little bit of the scenarios. We have codes of conduct, basically, and they go through different things that we can do and what we can't do. Uh, anything to do with finances, with our families. I know um, my wife worked for the school department. When it came time for the school budget, I or any discussions on the school budget, I excused myself and walked out when it came time to vote. Um, my son is on a dispatcher at the police department. When it comes up to the budgets or whatever, I walk, dismiss myself and walk away from that. Uh, Councilman Goodwin does the same thing when it comes to down with anything with the mills or any, any relationship to his business. And that's the way it should be. I mean, anywhere that our family or we're going to finance from, it shouldn't be allowed, which that's one of the things of conduct. Um, another rule is, is that us as a city councilor, we can't run it as a school board, so we either have to make our decisions, rather we run for city council or we run for the school board, so you can't hold two positions. Why is that there? I think it's common sense. If you have enough school board members on the city council, they could probably run a budget, whatever they want, and vice versa if it was the other way around. So the, there's checks and balances there. Um, city employees, this is one used to really get me because council, Councilman Vincent, the same, same scenario as I was, is that I was employed by the city, couldn't run for the city council, but they could tell me what my wages are, uh, and I have no say into it. And you stop and you think, what is the reasoning behind that? Well, I don't know if I was a firefighter that ended up being on the city council. I don't know if I could police my fire chief for what I set up here or what I went after the budget. And I don't think I could satisfy the city manager or what I was proposing for a budget for the fire department or whatever. Or he could turn around and tell me to look for another job. Uh, so there's, there's lots of chucks and balances there. Um, another thing that we can't do and it is we go to a public function or something like that, a chamber dinner or whatever it is, uh, we can't gather no more than four people. Uh, usually we're there, we're counting away, if somebody comes in the fifth person, one of us usually leaves or whatever. Uh, that's basically so we don't conspire to, to do city politics or come up with a vote before the city council chambers or whatever. Um, and you know, I, sometimes it has nothing to do with with city politics. But you know, I, I kind of like look at it in this way when I when anyone anyone looks at us. I mean, there's four of us that belong to Saint Saint Ignatius Parish up here. There's three of us that were on the fire department. And sometimes you wonder if people get the get the idea if if you're not not being coerced or, or whatever into into their ideals or whatever they feel like uh, their agenda is. And it's the same thing with um, city politics. I mean, we have a bipartisan city council. Um, I think our city forefathers and, and the voters that basically put that up there is that uh, they come to reason. I think that whatever political party that you got is sometimes uh, if the city goes more one party than the other, it kind of like people vote party lines and they have a, the other people that run against them have kind of like have a disadvantage. So I think they tried to make it equal. Um, Mayor Hill, you used to preach the team concept. Not that we're a team up here that we all agree alike. We've had some damn good arguments. Um, I know some nights I have a hard time sleeping. Sometimes one glass of wine doesn't make it. Maybe it takes two to put me to sleep. Um, but one thing I can say is that all the city council members that I served with, and just about every chair here has been filled at least once, twice, probably three times since I've been up in the council. The only chair that ain't been filled is the city manager. He's always been here. <laughs> um, 
and, and it bothers me to the point that I don't want to come to next November and sit up here as a city council member and turn around and have to worry. I, I don't have to worry about it because I'm not running, all right? But an other city council member turn around and sit here and have to turn around and say, do I get up on that podium and preach because somebody else in closing comments as far as the council members are going to turn around and say something bad about me or, or coach somebody else in a, in a, in a different, different election? I personally believe that this seat up here is for city business. The people that elect us are the people that put us here. We try to make it fair for all the candidates that run should have an equal thing. And that's why I'm kind of sorry that when I ran before, the chamber did run a thing. And I, I debated the person that was sitting in this chair before. And how I won, I don't know, because he is a fine gentleman, too. So, uh, you know. But that's, that's the way it went, and I've been very fortunate the voters have kept me up here. But I just don't want to get it to the point that it ends up putting hate and discontent in the city council that we can't trust each other. I, I don't want it to the point that we have to try to figure out at the end of the council meeting, I can turn around and say, I can take any one of these council members and praise them at the end of closing comments, and he can do the same thing for me at the, end of, uh, at the end of the city council. And I don't think that that's what the city council chair is for. Uh, so I, I do ask uh, the mayor or whatever, if you could probably put it to committee um, and so they can look into it and hopefully we can have it come back for debate. Maybe I'm all wet, maybe I'm, maybe I'm the only one that feels this way. But I do think it hinders the operation of not just the city council, but also the city, how we, how we work with and accomplish things in the, in the city. So I guess that's my end of it right now. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, although I won't speak for the mayor, I'm sure he's watching, and if he decides to direct something to a committee, he can certainly do that. I would also just note that committee chairs uh, can add things to the agenda that they feel are pertinent. Um, so I'd leave that probably with government operations. I think most of your comments revolve around operations of government, so I'd leave that to... Councillor Mishu to unpackage, if you will. So uh, further comments by councillors. Uh, Councillor Barry, thank you. Uh, yes, um, I just wanted to make a comment about when I first got on one of our boards at the city, I was invited to speak with the Chamber of Commerce that was there at that time, and it opened up a great dialogue with our business owners of the downtown because at the time we were doing the main street we were redoing the sidewalks a lot of things a lot of stuff was coming up with the historic district and i will say that was invaluable to meet those owners because we usually only see them when they come before us and we can't really have a dialogue so i really hope that we can work with the chamber and make sure that they continue to serve us in our community so that was my only comment Thank you. Further comments by councilors this evening? Seeing none, that'll bring us to agenda item number eight, which is communications and without objection from council. I'm going to have read into the record a letter that we received from Eversource, as I do believe it is pertinent to our discussion item under other tonight regarding the utility pole replacements. Uh, City Clerk, if you'd read the letter from Eversource, please. Thank you. Mr. Belmore, thank you for meeting with the Public Service Company of New Hampshire, DBA Eversource Energy, on Friday, September 27th, to discuss conditions where Eversource's contractor recently completed certain emergent roadside pole replacements, whose conditions were noted in recent inspection as requiring immediate replace to fulfill Eversource's tariff obligations to ensure safe and reliable electric service. In attendance were Eversource leaderships consisting of Manager of Regional Operations Tom Bolter, Manager of Regional Engineering Nate Duford, Supervisor of Design Nick Costco, Senior Construction Rep Pat Diggin, Community Relations Specialist Jeff Jackson, and Supervisor of, the list of Licensing Samantha Brigham met with city manager bob belmore public works director michael babinski city engineer amber hall and deputy city manager scott smith eversource acknowledges the following performance of the pole replacements conditions were not cleaned up to eversource or the city's expectations 
including spoils left around the base of the poles, poor restoration of sidewalks and pavement, in addition to poles having been set in locations that were not consistent with the City of Summersworth expectations for C priority replacement pole site selection. Eversource proposes the following measures to address those deficiencies. One, clean up the spoils which will include raking and removal of debris that was combed around the base of the poles that were discussed in today's meeting. Two, review every C priority reject with the City of Summersworth prior to transferring electric utilities to confirm that the area around the pole has been restored to the city's satisf satisfaction or to reach agreement on a time frame and means of accomplishing such restoration. Relocate the poles that not, relocate poles that not acceptable by the city to locations that meet their expectations. Eversource will restore sidewalks to as good condition as existed prior to performing the replacement work consistent with the City of Summersworth permit process. Concrete sidewalk panel panels to be replaced. Asphalt locations will be repaired with hot mix asphalt. Eversource will not proceed with the remaining eight C priority rejects until the foregoing measures have been addressed, including reaching agreement with the city on suitable locations for those remaining reject poles. Eversource appreciates the long-standing partnership we have with the City of Summersworth and are committed to continuing our work together, ensuring safe and reliable electric service. Eversource will undertake steps internally to ensure it contra its contractors achieve our shared expectations of how work within the city must be executed. We look forward to the cease and desist being lifted so that the above steps may be executed in a timely fashion. Sincerely, Tom Bolter. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That'll be entered into the record for tonight's meeting. Uh, brings us to agenda item nine, which is presentation of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise. Uh, we do have the petition this evening to extend and improve the public meeting notification requirements uh, in line with uh, what Mr. Brooks spoke about during the public comment this evening. I did speak with the mayor in preparation for this tonight, uh, and Mayor Girding would like this uh, item referred to the Government Operations Committee uh, for review and report out. So, uh, Councillor Mishu, your agenda continues to be built here this evening. Uh, there is no further or formal action required by the council regarding the petition uh, this evening. Brings us to the mayor's report, which is agenda item number 10. Uh, there is no report this evening. Uh, which then brings us to reports of standing committees. And I'll begin uh, with a report of the Finance Committee, which met uh, on September 26th. Uh, we had a number of agenda items. I'll try to be as concise as possible here. Uh, first item that the committee took up was a supplemental appropriation request from the Summersworth uh, School District. Um, both the uh, superintendent and business administrator, Superintendent Shea and business administrator Katie Krause were in attendance. Um, this is relating to adequacy funds that we receive from the state of New Hampshire. Uh, I think as many counselors know, during the budget process, the school department needs to estimate the amount of adequacy money that they will receive from the state. Um, we don't get notified of that adequacy money until the fall of the year and the budget is passed in the spring of the year. So uh, the business administrator does her best to estimate that, uh, talking with state officials. And I think traditionally, almost always, the school department and with the business administrator's recommendation is very conservative on what they place in their budget for adequacy aid. Uh, it would be problematic if they overshot what they think they would get for adequacy and then not get it. That would create a budget shortfall. So they typically underestimate it, and that is the case again this year. Uh, to catch us up, uh, there's an additional $262,265 that the school department received in adequacy aid. That can go back to the school department budget with uh, action by the city council 
uh, via a supplemental appropriation. Uh, and long and short, after a discussion uh, with the uh, school department, uh, the Finance Committee supports the supplemental appropriation uh, to, of $262,265 to the school department. According to the superintendent, uh, the money would be used for two primary areas. One is an additional kindergarten teacher. Uh, they saw a sharp increase in enrollments at that level uh, this year, uh, and they have already hired an additional kindergarten teacher uh, that was not in the budget. They were going to try to scrape from other portions of the budget to fund that if this uh, supplemental appropriation was not approved. The remaining funds would go towards uh, uh, technology improvements uh, throughout the district uh, that they've been underway with. So uh, we reminded the school department that council can't uh, direct the bottom line, how they will spend that money, only the, the bottom line of the 262000 but the superintendent did assure us that those are the two primary objectives of this supplemental appropriation. So that is on our agenda for a first reading this evening. It does require a public hearing, uh, and the superintendent and business administrator will be at our next meeting to answer any questions that uh, this body may have of them. The next item we discussed were elderly property tax exemptions. Uh, this was spurred at least in part by the recent uh, reassessments, uh, revaluations that occurred throughout the city. Uh, Right now, the Summersworth uh, elderly tax exemptions are uh, right in the middle, just about, of all other communities in Stratford County. Some have uh, more aggressive elderly tax exemptions, some have weaker elderly tax exemptions. We're about in the middle from the data that we reviewed provided by uh, Finance Director Smith. Um, however, uh, we did want to modify the elderly tax exemption so that the median level of both income and asset limits uh, were raised proportionately with what happened with the tax assessments so that the amount of relief that someone that currently gets relief from this program gets will continue with their uh, new reassessment so basically it, it kind of slides with it so um, we didn't make any other changes we felt that where we were was uh, appropriate inadequate but we are recommending that one change uh, and there is a first reading on that ordinance tonight uh, that is sponsored by the committee unanimously and that will require a public hearing uh, as well It'll be taken up at our next meeting uh, speaking of property revaluations revaluations we did have a lengthy discussion uh, on this as to whether or not the five-year cycle was uh, appropriate uh, long and short, uh, the committee agreed to keep it with the five-year cycle. Uh, there is a cost to this process, uh, although not cost prohibitive. It is an item that we would have to budget for, um, and changes would be de minimis. However, we also note that in any budget cycle, if a counselor thought there was enough going on uh, that property values would change uh, dramatically enough that a revaluation could be added during the budget discussion by any counselor or even beforehand as the city manager will often ask counselors if they have any budget considerations they would like him to include in the budget preparation that it could occur uh, at that time as well so long and short we had a long conversation but we agreed to stick with the current uh, cycle uh, and knowing that we could be flexible on the fly to add a revaluation at any given uh, point in time. I think a big part of our reasoning to stick with the five-year cycle is the tax cap. Uh, as we know that new property tax assessments are not eligible to be considered, uh, and it created a bit of a uh, <coughs> quandary shortfall, use the word that you want, uh, during our most recent uh, budget deliberations where uh, it was like an added piece to the tax cap that sort of uh, impacted us here so that was a big driving factor to leave it at the five-year cycle uh, but again also recognizing that we had the ability to uh, add a revaluation at any given point in time um, 
we did look at the state as a whole, or at least the, the county. Uh, there, it's all over the map. Some communities do it annually, some do it every three years, many do it every five years. Uh, it, it really, there, there seems to be no rhyme or reason to how often it is done. It's really a local policy consideration that seems to vary uh, as much as uh, colors on school uniforms. So, uh, under, there were no, uh, no, no reporting was held. There were no uh, miscellaneous items, and we adjourned. So that's the report of the Finance Committee. Thank you. I'll now go to public safety. Councillor Pepin, is there a report of public safety? Yes, I do. Um, we met on October 1st at 4.30 p.m. here at the City Council Chambers. Uh, all members of the committee were present. Uh, we were unable to pass the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, I was the only one who at the present time, I was there at the meeting, so uh, we extended that. We had a report from Chief Macklin from the police department. Um, basically, he has two openings right now as far as uh, positionings, positions. He has five that just finished the police academy and uh, is going to be starting their field training, which I believe is 16 weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so they'll be, after the 16 weeks, they'll probably be on their own after that. They'll be fully checked off. Um, he also did give us a report about the, the New Hampshire Police Academy. As it stands right now, there is four that are being uh, police academies that are ran per year. Uh, they're eliminating one, so there's only gonna be three, and it's due to uh, lack of recruits. Um, for some reason, <laughs> with all the police openings that we have throughout the state, uh, I guess we're having trouble getting people that want to apply for it. So um, so uh, there will be some reduction there as far as that. Uh, they will be extending their course from 16 weeks to 18 weeks. Uh, they kind of feel that that will help some of the people, some of the students that have a little difficult time, they could be able to work with them a little bit harder on, on certain subjects to help them through it. Um, we had a discussion about does it affect, uh, how's it affect our department? The only thing it probably would do is that it would take longer for us to get a recruit into the police academy because they're dropping off, uh, dropping off uh, one of their classes. Um, and we also had a discussion as, um, as we went through the budget season, um, we approved that we have a, a part-time police officer uh, the department has tried very, very hard to fill that position through there. Um, there doesn't seem to be any uh, anyone that is interested in filling the slot. Uh, the city manager and the chief would like to know if they could probably transfer the funding that was set aside for that to a part-time dispatcher. Uh, we have had a, a, a dispatcher that has been out on medical for quite some time, and it looks like he's going to be out for a lot, a little bit, quite a while longer. Uh, and there's always a need for dispatches in the area, so we felt um, there was a motion made by on the on the committee. They asked the city manager if he could flip the funding over to the from police uh, part-time police officer to a part-time uh, dispatcher, and that passed 4-0. Um, next thing was up. It was a fire report. Chief Moore basically um, gave us a, a Manning thing. Uh, He's hired two new uh, firefighters, and that was to replace the occupancies that where he got promoted and the assistant chiefs got promotion, those two vacancies. So now they're running with a full staff. He gave us an update on the FEMA grant um, on the fireboat. Hopefully that will be coming in in the middle of November. So that will be, be, uh, be in, in our department and ready for operation. Um, he did give us a report on the RIT team uh, and self-contained breathing apparatus. We're on the first phase of replacing the breathing apparatus after a certain amount of years that the, uh, the codes require that breathing apparatus be changed over. Well, we now have the 2013 series in. They're gonna be replaced with the new models of 2018 series. Um, there is a difference in these Scott packs, which ends up um, uh, needing to change the RIT, RIT team air pack, which has, uh, is basically for firefighters that will go in and rescue down firefighters, 
inside of a structure. Uh, they, it allows them to tie into their air packs or whatever. Uh, as a present, the new models, the 2018s, don't have all the don't have the same adapt adapters as the RIP air packs that we have presently on. So we need to upgrade that. Um, one of the longest discussions we had uh, was basically pre-ordering a new ladder truck. Um, as the city manager and the department heads were going through their CIP items, uh, the ladder truck is scheduled for 2027 to be replaced in the CIP plan. Uh, so that's starting to put feelers out there. Uh, the companies right now that are making ladder trucks have a four year waiting period. It takes four years to build a ladder truck. Uh, if we do start ordering the ladder truck right now, uh, you could possibly get some discounts if it's put in ahead of time and if you put some down payments. Uh, it is a very, very costly piece of apparatus. It's over $2 million for, for a ladder truck. So we had a discussion on financing. We had a discussion on how long it would take. Um, the ladder truck right now is a 2006. Um, if it takes... The life of expectancy of a fire apparatus is about 24 years. Uh, we're, we're almost at the end of that right now with the ladder truck. And if you think that you have to wait four years before you get another one to replace it, that's in the back of our minds. Um, so the committee discussed it and we'd like to, we have asked the staff and uh, the chief and stuff to do more research uh, to basically come out with some uh, figures or whatever to bring it back in front of the city council later on. Uh, we had a report from uh, from EMS, uh, Chris Hogan, uh, which is a new general manager. He gave us a gave us a, what the response time was in the city it was between four and four and a half minutes. He is fully staffed, and we did have a brief discussion on mutual aid coverage and and how much is utilized in in the city as far as EMS. And we adjourned at 504. Public safety doesn't meet very often, but when you meet, you have a lot. So. A lot of truck with a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring us to our next committee report, Economic Development. Councilor Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, economic Development met uh, directly before the council meeting this evening. We reviewed a number of items, the first of which was uh, the responses to the one Winter Street RFP, which was zero. So we discussed um, sort of what next steps for that site might look like um, and uh, particularly how it could be um, strategic to meet a requirement for a grant the city took in the 1970s um, that required a recreation space in the city. And now that we have approved a solar project on, uh, on some of that recreation space, the city's looking to reassign um, uh, some of that recreation space to either existing recreation space or city on land uh, to meet that requirement. So um, we're sort of tabling conversations around one order street until we work through, uh, the city staff work through um, the recreation requirements uh, uh, there. Um, we did discuss in general that um, a likely highest and best use, if not for development directly, would be for parking, either for municipal use and or to um, pair with another development site nearby in the downtown, given um, there's limited space for on-site parking on uh, some of the development parcels in the downtown, but largely uh, tabling it for now until the city works through um, the zoning requirements. <clears throat> we also, next agenda item was a discussion for uh, deed restrictions located at a property at 28 Green Street. This property was previously owned by the city, was taken for back taxes, and then sold um, at the time, I believe in 2016, the city placed a number of deed restrictions on the property that limited uh, the uses um, and use of that property, um, essentially in perpetuity, excuse me, um, as it was on the deed. Uh, the current owner of that property is looking to have um, some of those restrictions removed to enable them to resell and redevelop uh, the parcel. Um, and the committee uh, voted in favor of a resolution um, to go ahead of the full council to remove uh, some of those restrictions from the deed. Uh, we also reviewed an application for 
5 Main Street, um, 30, uh, Chapter 31 uh, Tax Relief uh, Incentive for 5 uh, Main Street, which is the former Summersworth Police Station in the downtown. Uh, and we unanimously approved uh, a recommendation for the council to vote on tax relief for seven years on that parcel. Uh, that development um, is very much in line with the uh, objectives of the master plan and other um, projects in the downtown that have received that relief. Um, we thought it was appropriate to put that forward uh, to the whole council. Uh, we then moved on to uh, the discussion of the former National Guard parcel, um, which um, as part of its disposition uh, needs to be rezoned as it is currently uh, zoned for recreation, which does not allow for housing development, um, which the city is uh, presumably supporting there with the uh, selected uh, respondent to that RFP. Um, and staff presented a plan to create a uh, overlay for that parcel to enable housing development both um, on that parcel, but also to bring some adjacent parcels which have multifamily housing, existing multifamily housing there um, into compliance, um, which was a relatively um, sophisticated way to address the issue, which was, was, which was good. Um, and the committee voted in favor of, uh, of that moving forward to council as well. Um, under miscellaneous, we had an entrepreneur, a local entrepreneur uh, join us to discuss um, some ideas around data centers and innovation in uh, vacant spaces in the downtown. Um, and we adjourned shortly before this meeting. Great. Thank you for the report out. Uh, next up is Public Works in the Environment. I'll give that report. Public Works and Environment Committee met on September 26th. Um, we had a couple of discussion items regarding constitutional way. Uh, as you drive around the city, it, undoubtedly everybody sees that that work is ongoing. Uh, and the latest hiccup uh, is that the ornamental lighting, which will be <coughs> akin to what you find in the rest of the downtown, on the easterly side of constitutional way was going to be difficult for sidewalk uh, clearing equipment to clear the sidewalks in the winter time on a few sections. Uh, so the uh, engineer uh, proposed moving the ornamental lighting bases off of the curb edge sidewalk into a grass strip that's just behind the sidewalk, which actually would work out rather well, would be much cleaner looking uh, and would allow for uh, easier plowing and would also provide more light on the sidewalk. So. Um, we had a map that showed those proposed locations. Uh, it's particularly easier to do now since we've removed a bunch of diseased and dead trees in the corridor. There'll be new trees planted and we can coordinate the planting of those trees with the ornamental lights so they don't conflict with one another. So long and short, this seems to make sense from a number of perspectives. Uh, the one issue is that it requires us to get uh, an easement uh, from the American Legion to move several of these light bases onto that grass strip which is owned by the American Legion. Uh, city staff has been in contact with the American Legion and they are in full support of this. They've been very supportive of the project in general. So the uh, committee uh, supported the moving of the lights to that location uh, unanimously. I would note that we do have a resolution uh, on our agenda tonight, Resolution 1525, uh, to allow the city manager to accept those easements with the American Legion Post. Uh, I'd respectfully ask that council consider suspension of rules for a second reading on that tonight so that the work can continue because they're, they've moved to that side of the street now and they want to get going. So, uh, One question, Your Honor. Yes, if, if I may at this time. Um, so there's no additional cost to the city for, on this project? Not, nothing that was noted at the committee level. Thank you. Um, I would note that we did have discussion about the adequacy of the lighting. I know Councillor Berry inquired about that, and uh, the city engineer uh, showed us the lighting plan, and the, the area will be very well lit once it's completed. So... Uh, we then had a discussion about uh, the repair of uh, manhole covers uh, in the High Street corridor from roughly South Street to uh, about Stackpole Road. Uh, 
Uh, I think anybody that drives that corridor knows that uh, many, if not all, of the manhole covers are uh, failing, they're depressed, and it causes vehicles to weave and bob through that corridor. Uh, we're looking to repair all of those before winter because it'll be particularly problematic with plowing operations. Grenice and Sons, which is doing the Constitutional Way project, has a crew free and they're willing to jump on this uh, in the time between now and uh, I'll say Thanksgiving to complete that work. Uh, it's just under $3,000 per manhole to do those repairs. Um, uh, and uh, I think the math is by the time it's all said and done is somewhere between ninety and a hundred thousand dollars to repair uh, those manhole covers, most of which are sewer manhole covers, and that would be paid for from the sewer enterprise fund. So there would no be no impact to the general fund. There are a handful of drain covers which uh, we can fund out of the the public works budget appropriately, at least for the time being. So uh, council supports this. Uh, uh, the committee supports this. Uh, resolution 1425 speaks to contracting with Grenice and Sons to do this work. We'd respectfully request that Council consider suspending rules on that so that we can green light this work uh, for Grenice and Sons. There is a supplemental appropriation ordinance that is sort of attached to this that can move on its own pace. I would suggest that if we authorize resolution 1425 that we are locking ourselves into some degree to Ordinance 925, which is the supplemental uh, appropriation. So just bear that in mind if we do uh, take this up uh, this evening. But uh, both are supported by uh, the committee. Uh, at the request of Councilor Vincent, we had a discussion about the four or five dumpsters that are at the Public Works property uh, uh, that are used for residents and some small businesses for cardboard. Uh, disposal. Um, Public Works Director said since they've changed the dumpster type uh, and put up some signage that the amount of uh, debris, uh, cardboard left outside of the dumpsters, just trash, has really been cut down and the site has been uh, much better to, to police uh, with these changes. Uh, we did note that sometimes the dumpsters are not placed back on the hut top. It's up to the driver of the truck. They're sometimes uh, scattered, but by and large, uh, the, the director felt that they were, uh, the site was pretty well uh, managed. Uh, we did discuss how we might be able to clean it up at some point in the future if we were to repave the public works property. That's probably something that should be on our agenda and radar screen in the coming years, uh, at least to begin tackling that. And that would be a good time to then look at location of the dumpsters, do we place them uh, on pavement, concrete pad, and just an overall site improvement at that time. But for the time being, uh, the committee felt just to like leave it as it is. It seems to be managing itself reasonably well uh, with notation that it does uh, need to be uh, addressed every now and again. Next item on our agenda uh, was the location of the new water tank standpipe up at the Noble Pines. I think as councilors know, in our CIP is replacement of the uh, very old uh, historic water tank, water tower standpipe at the Noble Pines. Um, uh, engineering reports suggest that the new water tank should be at the Noble Pines for elevation purposes. Uh, the new water tank would be a different style. It would look more like a golf ball on a golf tee. Uh, or akin to the one that you now see in Dover behind uh, Starbucks and Five Guys Burgers. So if you've seen that one that seemed to go up overnight, uh, it would look more like that. Uh, the idea is we want to get the water higher in the air to give more water pressure for the residents on the hill because water pressure at the top of the hill is, is limited because there's not enough head pressure in the tank. Um, Hydraulics 101 class here, who knew? Uh, Right Pierce Engineers has proposed four locations for the water tank. One is uh, exactly where the existing one is, which obviously would require us to demo the existing tank and then build the new one, during which time we would only have one tank, which is the one up off of Rocky Hill Road. That would in impact flow, capacity, fire flows, uh, and it would be particularly problematic for uh, radio tower equipment because we lease space at the top of the water tank. Uh, so uh, we kind of ruled that one out rather quickly. 
another location was where the skateboard park currently is. Although we thought that was perhaps doable, uh, it would require us to relocate the skateboard park. Uh, but where would we re relocate that to? Would we put it where the existing water tank is? It, it's a possibility, but we, we erred not in that direction. Uh, the other one was where the larger playground is on the corner of Grand and Noble, very much uh, sort of the other end of the park from where it is now. We didn't like that from a number of perspectives, not the least of which was relocating a playground far more expensive than relocating a skate park. A new playground of that nature is probably a quarter million dollars, so we thought we would uh, opt not to do that. The final location, which is actually identified as location three, was immediately adjacent to the existing water tank. Uh, don't ask me what immediately is, but thereabouts. Um, and we support that location. There is a vote under other for the rest of the council to weigh in on that uh, this evening. Uh, so that design work uh, can continue. Um, I would note we talked about the, the complexity of once the new tank is built, moving radio equipment uh, to the new tank, the cell tower leases, uh, all of those <coughs> sorts of things, as well as uh, public safety communications equipment. The repeater is actually located right now in the Hilltop School. There's a formal agreement with Schinberg Properties as a backup generator there. But in an ideal world, the city equipment should be on city property. So maybe relocating that to the new water tank at that time with an appropriate infrastructure would, would make sense. So we're a long ways from building the tank, but this is just the logical next step. Where is it going to go? And we need to sort of sign off on that uh, through our vote this evening. Uh, we then had a lengthy discussion about our proposed draft paving list. Uh, we are not yet ready to bring that to full council, uh, but at least preliminarily, I can tell you that we're looking to uh, shim and overlay uh, Granite Way, Woodchuck Lane, and uh, Flynn Street. So uh, they're all residential side streets. Um, a discussion for the committee at a meeting to be held in the future is do we shim and overlay Flynn Street or do we do a more aggressive construction approach there? Um, it's, a, it's not used by a lot of cars. It's a residential side street. We, we tend to believe that a shim and overlay would work there versus a much more expensive construction option. The other street that's on our paving list is uh, Willan Drive. However, that requires a very extensive uh, reclamation and box cut and we'll get into the details of what that is, but in some total, it's going to be just shy of a million dollars to do Willan Drive. Our paving budget is a million dollars uh, a year, thereabouts. Uh, so the committee uh, favors uh, moving forward, perhaps with Willan Drive, but bonding that. When you rebuild a road like this, it's more than um, a maintenance overlay uh, and would last easily probably 10 years. So a 10-year bond uh, to do that work would keep our paving budget intact to do these other streets and not compromise our road resurfacing program. So handling it more akin to a complete streets, although it's not sewer line and water line, but it's closer to that than a shim and overlay. So more to come on that, but that's sort of the direction that uh, the committee is headed in uh, right now. So. Uh, under miscellaneous, we discussed the communication that was read into the uh, record by, from Eversource. Uh, I think the committee was very pleased to hear that response from Eversource. There is uh, a vote to send a letter to Eversource with a copy to the PUC under other this evening. Uh, I think the committee generally supports holding on that letter to see if Eversource uh, completes the work as they say. Uh, city staff reported out that the meeting they had with Eversource was very positive. Eversource was, uh, took full ownership of it over the issues for their contractor. They didn't try to deflect it. So uh, we're willing to sort of hold on it for now if that is the will of council. So hence why we wanted it read into the record for you here this evening. That is the report of the Public Works and Environment Committee. Sorry for the length of that. Uh, brings us to Government Operations, Councilor Mishu. Hey, we have not met, Your Honor, but we will be meeting soon. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, and lastly, Recreation, Councillor Cameron. No report tonight, but we have a meeting tomorrow scheduled at 3 p.m. 
Very good. Thank you very much. Brings us to agenda item number 12. Are there any reports of special committees this evening? Councilor Barry. Uh, yes, the Historic District Commission met um, one week ago, I believe it was, maybe two. Sorry, my weeks are going by very, very fast. I just wanted to make the council aware that there was elections for the HDC and the new chair is Richard Brooks and our new vice chair is Kim Schoen. Um, as you all are aware, we had two members, one full, one alternate, give notice that they are not um, continuing on that board. So that opens up, I believe it is three full members and one alternate, if not two alternates at this time. We do have quite a few alternates on that committee that could take on full time if nobody comes forward. But as always, hopefully people will come forward and want to serve on that board. Great. Thank you for the report. Any further reports of special committees? Seeing none, city manager. Thank you, Your Honor. I offer the following comments were provided in my written report to council for this evening's meeting. Um, under, uh, I'll skip over ordinances. There's nothing new to report there on the unfinished business. Under resolutions, I just mentioned that um, the Government Operations Committee met on September 11th as a reminder and they voted to recommend to the full council the following amendments to th this resolution and I attached a red-lined version of the resolution regarding those recommended changes. On the new business, the supplemental appropriation of additional state adequacy grant funding for the school board. Uh, again, as noted, the Finance Committee is recommending approval. I did provide you the memorandum that was provided to the Finance Committee from School Superintendent John Shea. Uh, we're required to have a public hearing by charter, uh, so I recommend that the council schedule a public hearing at our next regular meeting on October 21st, Monday, October 21st. Without objection, we'll schedule that public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Next ordinance, 825, is in regards to uh, amending our city ordinance, Chapter 34, exemptions and credits, elderly property tax exemption. The Finance Committee, as reported out, is recommending uh, an increase to the elderly exemption amount. I provided you the memorandum that was discussed at the Finance Committee that was provided by Mary Beth Walker, our city assessor, and uh, also a red line version of the proposed ordinance changes. Again, um, as usual for any ordinances, we rec I recommend a public hearing be scheduled at, at the next regular council meeting, October 21st at 7 p.m. Without objection, we'll do that. And we have another one that will need a public hearing on October 21st at 7 p.m. Uh, as required by charter again uh, another supplemental appropriation is as reported out by the public's committee chair to repair manhole structures on high street in the vicinity of horn street to sinclair it might be a little bit beyond sinclair close to stack post that's why we noted in the vicinity um we'll need a public hearing for this one the resolution uh, as, as noted by the ch uh, the uh, deputy mayor chair of the committee uh, will request a uh, waiver of rules to have a second reading into those resolutions the first one being 1325 and that's to authorize uh, the manager to sign a comprehensive recruitment contract with municipal resources Inc of Plymouth New Hampshire for the recruitment of a new city manager the government operations committee met on September 11th and voted to recommend this resolution to the full council I provided you a copy of the pros proposed contract uh, and just note, um, as indicated in the proposed contract, there'll be other associated expenses to complete the search to include advertisements and other search-related costs. Next resolution, 1425, is the uh, authorization for the manager to sign a contract with N. Granice and Sons of Salem, Mass., for the rehabilitation of the 23 manhole structures on High Street that was noted in the supplemental appropriations just a few minutes ago. I provided you... Um, and a memorandum from Mike Babinski, our public works director, and also a copy of the the uh, contract for N. Um And one of the reasons to start this project right away is is the is the fact that November 15th we start the uh, our road construction moratorium, so we'd want to move quickly on this and get the work done before the snow falls, and the moratorium for constructions on streets is, takes place. The next resolution 1525 is regarding accepting the easements from the Legion Post 69 associated with the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project. 
Again, it was recommended by the Public Works Committee. Um, I provided you a copy of the easement that um, was approved by City Attorney. Uh, we did try to secure easements from the property owner that leases uh, the property to the Citizens Bank, but they you know, weren't willing to play ball with us. So we went back and, and put all the lights over on the Legion side, and they're fine with having four lights over there, and one light is by the entrance of the driveway into the back of all the businesses on High Street and, and, and the entranceway to the Citizens Bank. Um, Your Honor, you discussed the Eversource Pole Replacement Program and also the Hamilton uh, Street Water Tank, also referred to as the Noble Pines Water Tank or Standpipe. And uh, under informational items, as reported out by Public Safety Chair uh, Councilor Pepin, we discussed this at uh, their meeting on October 1st, and they are recommending I move forward with reallocating uh, the part-time poli police officer uh, funding that was approved by council and start to recruit, see if we can recruit a part-time uh, dispatcher. And without objections, I will do that. That concludes my report, Your Honor. Thank you, Manager Belmore. That brings us to agenda item number 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under mayoral appointments, uh, the mayor has appointed Dennis Messier as a commissioner to the Summersworth Housing Authority Board of Commissioners with a term to expire in February 2027. This appointment does not require council confirmation. Brings us to agenda item 14, which is lay on the table. There are no items on the table. Brings us to agenda item 15, which is unfinished business. First unfinished business is ordinance number 6-25. Uh, City Clerk, for a second reading on ordinance number 6-25, please. Ordinance 625, to amend chapter 13D, noise nuisance control, section 13D, semicolon four, exclusions and exemptions. To add section 13D, semicolon four C, waivers, to authorize the city manager to grant waivers of this ordinance. Ordinance number 625, having been, first, having been ready first and second time and had a public hearing, is now before council for any amendments. Seeing no amendments, the chair will entertain a motion on ordinance number 625. Councilor Pepin. Move to adopt it. Councilor Pepin moves for the adoption of ordinance number 625, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion. Seeing none, the city clerk will call the roll. If you're in favor of ordinance number 625, you will indicate by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll indicate by saying no. City clerk. Councillor Pepin. Aye. Vincent. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Parody Canzero. Aye. Mishu. Aye. Witham. Aye. Goodwin. Aye. Cameron. Aye. Barry. Aye. Someone correct me next time around. It's going to be yes from now on. I seemed weird. I don't know. It just did. So. We just did what we were told. You did well. <laughs> I, oddly enough, I didn't like what you did, but <laughs> I did tell you to do that. Uh, brings us to resolutions under unfinished business. Resolution 1-25. Uh, City Clerk for a second reading on resolution 1-25. Resolution 1-25 to amend council rules and regulations, section 17, appointments. Thank you, and Councilor Mishu, is this ready for action? I should have asked before. Yes, it is, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. So resolution 1-25, having been read a first and second time and re-referred to the Government Operations Committee, is now before you for any amendment. Is there an amendment being offered on this resolution? Councilor Parity, Captain Zero. Um, I would like to uh, support the amendments recommended by the Government Ops Committee. So there are amendments that have been recommended. Point, point, yeah, point of order. And just clarify, the are is the red line is, is a motion required for the red line in our packet to be adopted? Yes. Okay. Are you making such a motion, motion? for the I, red line to copy uh, I, in our I, I, I am seconding the motion that uh, <laughs> Councillor Parity Catanzaro is so making Par to it. Councillor Parity Catanzaro moves that uh, resolution 1 25 be amended as provided in the red line version provided to the council this evening. Is that seconded by Councillor Goodwin? Yes, thank you. Thank you. 
discussion on the amendments. Manager Belmore, I'll refer to you first. Go ahead. Well, I, I may have uh, jumped ahead of the council. My apologies. I was just going to read what the amendments were. Um, originally, it was proposed as 60 days prior to any board member's term ex expiration that any openings would be advertised for 60. It's been amended to 30, or at least it's been recommended to be amended by 30. Um, it was just a grammatical thing to insert the in front of city website and add and social media is another amendment. And again, to repeat, the 60 days goes to 30 day notice re requirement may be waived by the council or other authorized individual or authority. So it was added in there in case there's an emergency need to appoint somebody. And the first reading of it, nominees were required to attend the next regular meeting of the city council after their name had been placed on the agenda and nomination by the mayor. This now becomes a uh, strike also required to recommended. And city Facebook was, the, what, what changed with city Facebook that was stricken and social media was inserted to cover all platforms of social media. So those are the amendments. Discussion on the amendments. Councilor Goodwin. Yes, thank you. Um, after the first reading of this, we heard um, other councilors' concerns about um, uh, it being either an expense to the city with advertising, um, the duration being uh, perhaps too long, um, and you know, it being onerous to potential applicants to require them to come to council. So I think the committee heard those uh, those concerns and um, have proposed the red lines in, uh, in front of you to, to decrease the um, the uh, advertising uh, duration to 30 days um, and to uh, just simply recommend that applicants come to council, um, which has always been best practices. Now we're just putting it in, in writing. Um, so they will not be required, it's just recommended. Um, and I just wanted to speak to um, Mr. LaHoulier's comments earlier, and I think that the intent of um, my sponsorship for this ordinance, uh, or excuse me, resolution, is that I want to have the most applicants to the mayor's office as possible. It's all about trying to, to be transparent and make it uh, clear what uh, opportunities are available to engage in um, and not expect people to um, dig in and have to you know, come to City Hall and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in engaging, what ways can I engage? You know, I think it should be easy for our residents to you know, either go to the library or go online and you know, in a quick order figure out what the openings are and how they can engage. And that's, I think, the, the most important change in here is the is the advertising of open positions and not simply, um, you, you know, not simply leaving them unadvertised or assuming that people that have already uh, served are going to be reappointed to those positions. Um, we want to give every everyone every open position an opportunity for someone to apply, um, and that you know is going to be filtered through the mayor because the mayor then needs to. Uh, vet and um, put them before council, and then council independently vets and votes on them as well. So it's a, it's a multi-step process. And one of the ways that I've been thinking about this um, discussion is it really follows a similar logic to the city's procurement policy, and that we, uh, you know, we as a city support, um, you know, buy a lot of goods, um, and we just want to make sure that our purchasing of goods and services um, is transparent and competitive. Um, and we have a procurement policy that requires us to post uh, open available contracts above a certain value, uh, to solicit a certain number of bids, whatever. I mean, it's obviously very entailed with procurement. Um, but it's, I think the intent is similar, right? We want to make sure that, our, that we are, we're seeking out the most um, applicants that we can for um, for committees and uh, our, our boards, um, and just doing so in a transparent manner. So that's really the intent here. And I would add one thing that was not caught in this red line that I remember us talking about in the committee was I believe we had actually um, 
turned advertised to posted because this is not a newspaper ad. This isn't, there's no expense uh, incurred by the city to, um, to advertise. This is simply posting um, on the, the typical city uh, forums at, at no you know, cost to us for the marketing as it were. So I'm not, you know, I, I think advertised might be a Without little... objection, we'll consider that part of the motion for the amendment. Thank you. So um, all, uh, all of which to say is I will be supporting uh, this as amended and hope others will as well. Further discussion, Councillor Cameron, then Councillor Vincent. I just wanted to say I will be in support of this um, tonight. We, after that robust discussion the last time on this, I think we took away everybody's concerns and addressed everything in this to the best possible solution for everybody. So I will be in support of this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Vincent, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, um, what I didn't like about the first proposal was the 60 days. I thought it was too long. Now it's been changed. Um, and I'm giving this some thought, you know, um, um, by changing this really takes, um, um, takes it away, I guess, from just the mayor uh, in a political field. Uh, if, if you had a bunch of friends and you wanted to see things go your way, if I was the mayor, I could um, pick those friends, so to speak. Um, so I kind of like, I mean, I kind of like putting it out there like this and kind of giving it a fair so we see everybody. I know when my father was on the planning board, something rotten happened to him. And when he came to the meeting the night because of a new mayor, he, um, he didn't get reelected, re so to speak, or appointed, reappointed. He showed up for the meeting, and because he had a disliking or the mayor had a disliking with him, uh, the people at the meeting said, what are you doing here, Vince? He said, I'm here for the meeting. You weren't reappointed. And the mayor didn't even tell him at the time, which I thought was rotten. Nevertheless, uh, it alleviates that type of stuff. Thank you. I'll be in support. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments by counselors? I would just note that I kind of had some pretty strong objection to the first pass of this resolution. I do think the amendments... Uh, go a long ways towards uh, softening it up uh, to not being overly burdensome. Uh, it is true that uh, the appointment comes from the mayor and is then uh, confirmed by the city council. That remains the same. So uh, although I do hear you, Councillor Vincent, the mayor can still choose to appoint who he wants. Uh, and the council, council then has the option to say yay or nay. Um, and I'm okay with that because uh, of our form of government where the mayor only votes to break a tie. Uh, it does provide the mayor with uh, some uh, political capital, if you will, which in my mind is at least uh, a bit important. Uh, I think reducing it to 30 days is reasonable. I think uh, recommending that someone come to a meeting is better than required. Uh, I'm not sure this will help us a lot or hurt us a lot. It's relatively benign, but I think it does go to the idea that we at least want to say, hey, we have openings, as we heard tonight. We have many openings on the planning board, the Historic District Commission, uh, and others. So, uh, you know, if we promote that more on social media, maybe that helps us a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm not one to know, but it certainly can't hurt. So. Uh, I'll be in support of the resolution as amended tonight. So, Councillor Barry. Uh, you actually just touched on a few things. I think it's actually pretty rare that we receive resignations before the term is actually up at Council, like we had to write in tonight for the HDC. But for the most part, they're not very um, out there, like that we're not coming back as a member. So a lot of times the public doesn't get to hear about it. So I think anytime the public is made more aware of it, hopefully it will spur the oh I was thinking about doing something I heard there was a resignation or I heard there was openings I think we'll just benefit so I am in support so before council at the moment is the uh, amendment as offered up by councillor parody Catanzaro seconded by councillor Goodwin which is the red line version as discussed any further discussion on the amendment 
If you're in favor of the amendment, you'll signify by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll signify by saying no. All those in favor of the amendment? Yes. 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 Any opposed? The amendment passes. And now before you is resolution 1-25 as amended. Is there a motion? Councilor Goodwin. I'll make a motion for its adoption. Councilor Goodwin uh, moves for the adoption of resolution 1-25 as amended, seconded by Councilor Mishu. Discussion? Councilor Parity Catton Zero. Um, yeah, I think most of my thoughts have been shared already by the fellow, fellow councillors, but I think this just puts it in front of people so you don't have to know someone to know what's coming up. Um, I think it'll be a really good practice for us to have a list of standing openings and upcoming appointments. Um, there's a lot of folks out there that would want to be involved and wouldn't necessarily think to call around to try to find out what, so uh, I'm certainly in favor of this tonight. I suppose the next step we could hire a plane out of Skyhaven to pull a banner around like they do at Hampton Beach in the summer. But is that in the form of an amendment? No, it is not yet. No, no. It'll come up at budget time. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, City Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Councillor Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Mishu? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Barry? Yes. Excellent. Resolution 1-25 as amended is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number 16, which is ordinances. We have a first reading on ordinance number 725, which is a supplemental appropriation regarding the state adequacy grant funding for the school department. City Clerk. Ordinance number 7-25, supplemental appropriation of additional state adequacy grant funding for the school department. October 7, 2024, the City of Summersworth ordains that pursuant to Section 7.7A of the City Charter, the annual budget for the City of Summersworth for fiscal year 24-25 is amended as follows. <clears throat> Appropriate $262,000. $265 from additional state adequacy grant revenue to the school department budget as follows. Original budget, $31,969,747. Amendment, $262,265. Revised budget, $32,232,012. Approved as funding, Scott A. Smith, Director of Finance Administration, recorded by Kristen LePan, City Clerk. Background, this ordinance appropriates additional state adequacy grant funding made available after the budget was developed for the school department. The estimated adequacy grant provided by the state during the budget development process was $8,861,219. And the actual adequacy grant is $9,123,484. The intent is to use this appropriation for an additional kindergarten teaching position and technology upgrades. This ordinance requires a public hearing and requires a two-thirds majority vote of the City Council after the public hearing subject to Section 7.4.1 and Section 7.7A of the City Charter. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Martin Pepin, Laura Berry, and Richard Mishu, and approved by the City Attorney. Ordinance number 725 will remain in first reading until our next meeting in a public hearing. Brings us to 16B, which is ordinance number 825 regarding uh, elderly tax exemptions and credits. Uh, City Clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 825. Ordinance 825 to amend Chapter 34 Exemptions and Credits Section 34.1 Elderly Property Tax Exemption amending the amount of the elderly property tax exemption October 7, 2024. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the ordinances of the City of Summersworth as amended by further amended as follows. Be further amended as follows, sorry. Delete section 34.1A in its entirety and replace it with the following. Section 34.1, elderly property tax exemption. A, amount of exemption. 
The elderly exemptions from property tax in the City of Summersworth based on assessed value for qualified taxpayers are as follows, effective April 1, 2024. 1. For a person 65 years of age up to 74 years, $110,000. 2. For a person 75 of years of age up to 79 years, $135,000. 3. For a person 80 years of age or older, $150,000. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Martin Pepin, Richard Mishu, Laura Berry, and approved by the City Attorney. Ordinance number 825 will remain in first reading until our next meeting in a public hearing. Brings us to 16C, Ordinance 925, Supplemental Appropriation for Manhole Structure Repairs. Uh, City Clerk. Ordinance number 925, Supplemental Appropriation to Repair Manhole Structures on High Street <coughs> in the vicinity of Horn Street to Sinclair Avenue, October 7th, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that pursuant to Section 7.7A of the City Charter, the annual budget for the City of Summersworth for fiscal year 2024-2025 is amended as follows. Appropriate $17,390 from the unassigned fund balance to the capital outlay budget in the general fund and appropriate $82,610 from the sewer fund revenue to the sewer fund budget as follows. Capital outlay budget $45,000, amendment $17,390, revised capital outlay budget $62,390. Sewer fund budget $3,619,635, amendment $82,610, revised sewer fund budget $3,702,245. Approved as to funding, Scott A. Smith, Director of Finance Administration, recorded by Kristen LePan, City Clerk. Background. This ordinance appropriates funding to repair manhole structures on High Street in the vicinity of Horn Street to Sinclair Ave. There are a total of 23 structures. Four of them are drainage manholes and 19 are sewer manholes. This ordinance requires a public hearing and requires a two-third majority vote of the City Council after the public hearing subject to Section 7.4.1 and Section 7.7A of the City Charter. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Martin Pepin, Laura Berry, Richard Mishu, and approved by the City Attorney. Your Honor. Councilor Vincent. I'd like to suspend Council rules uh, for a second reading this evening. Uh, we cannot. This is an ordinance and it requires a public hearing at the next meeting. But I think you are looking to suspend rules on Resolution 1425 which relates. Thank you for that correction, please. You're welcome. Uh, Ordinance number 9-25 will remain in first reading. <clears throat> point of order. <laughs> point of order, yes, sorry. Um, apologies, because this might just be me not understanding the math, but um, it's appropriating um, in the first line from the unassigned fund balance to the capital outlay. So I understand why capital outlay goes up. Um, but the second line, the appropriate 82 and change from the sewer fund budget, why does the sewer fund budget then go up? So it's an appropriation, so appropriation money in, so it is supplemental, so that amount is going up. I don't know if Sydney Manager can explain it better than that. Well, the capital outlay bud budget is in the general fund budget, and the uh, sewer fund budget covers uh, one part of the utility program here the other part is the water fund so the council approves the general fund budget the sewer fund budget and the water fund budget so you approve 3.6 million a little over uh, for this fiscal year and we're increasing it by that 82,000 and change so then you get your new your new budget number as approved by council and the other one's general fund this one is one of the utilities so there's three components. There's actually four. There's, 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 you have solid waste, and you, you have um, the school budget and the county budget. But 
the three largest components of the city's budget is the general fund budget, operating budget, the sewer fund operating budget, which also includes capital outlay, but also the water fund utility budget. So those the two components are being increased. And just to add a little bit of clarity there, maybe the sewer fund budget is funded by user rates, no. uh, water fund by the rates there not coming out of taxation. So it's, it's, that's why they're kind of handled separately in the budget. Are we confusing it more, Councillor, or are we helping it all? A little. I mean, I see a from and a two in the first <laughs> sentence and only a from in the second <laughs> sentence. And I guess what I would be looking for for clarity is so which of these is funding this the man the manhole structures or is it being split it, from it, those it two? is so the the in the first instance the capital outlay budget amendment is funding the drainage covers there's four of them this is from unassigned fund and it's from unassigned fund balance that's what's funding right. it. money in our unassigned fund balance right. and so is and the and 82 the is funding the sewer manhole covers which there's what 19 of them and the sewer appropriation increases from the sewer fund revenue we have we have actually cash That's available it. cash and okay it's called re re revenue thank you you're welcome i think <laughs> councilor good one uh, the manager addressed my comment but uh this was good clarification thank you further clarification on the ordinance again which is in first reading but should take away some of the discussion or allow council to seek out some clarity between now and the next meeting if necessary so thank you for that brings us to resolutions uh, resolution 13-25 for first reading uh, city clerk resolution number 1325 to authorize the city manager to sign a comprehensive recruitment contract with Municipal Resources, Inc. of Plymouth, New Hampshire for the recruitment of a city manager, October 7th, 2024. Whereas city manager Robert M. Belmore has announced his retirement as city manager of Summersworth effective June 30th, 2025. And whereas the City Council would like professional guidance to perform a comprehensive search to find a qualified candidate that exemplifies and qualities and experience required to fill the position of the City Manager. And whereas Municipal Resources, Inc., MRI of Plymouth, New Hampshire, has extensive experience in providing communities with executive recruitments specializing in the New England area and whereas the cost of this MRI comprehensive recruitment package will be $13,250. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to sign a comprehensive recruitment contract with the Municipal Resources, Inc. of Plymouth, New Hampshire for an amount of $13,250 and to take any other actions relative to this contract determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors Richard Mishu, Robert Gibson, Nancy Cameron, Paul Goodwin, and approved by the city attorney. Resolution 13-25 will remain in first reading until our next regularly scheduled meeting. Brings us to resolution 14-25 for first reading, city clerk. Resolution 14-25 to authorize the city manager to contract with Engren East and Sons, Inc. of Salem, New Massachusetts for the rehabilitation of 23 manhole structures on High Street, October 7, 2024, whereas a supplemental appropriation is being considered to provide funding in the City of Summersworth sewer and general funds for the fiscal year 2024-25 budget to rehabilitate 23 manholes by replacing covers and reconstructing, reconstructing structures on High Street in the vicinity, vicinity of Horn Street to Sinclair Avenue. And whereas N. Granice and Sons, Inc. of Salem, Massachusetts is currently under contract for the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project and could be contracted for this work, thereby reducing the need for mobilization and helping to expedite this project. And whereas City staff requested and received a proposal for this project and recommends awarding the contract to N. Granice and Sons, Inc. for $90,850. And whereas the Finance Committee and the Public Works and Environment Committee 
has reviewed the proposal with city staff and supports the recommendation to appropriate $90,850 and to include the contingency of $9,150. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to enter into a contract with Engrenice and Sons, Inc. to rehabilitate 23 manhole structures along High Street in the vicinity of Horn Street to Sinclair Avenue for an amount of $90,850 and be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the city manager may increase the contract by an additional $9,150 for contingencies to an amount not to exceed $100,000 and may take an additional action relative to this contract determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Martin Pepin, Laura Berry, Richard Michu, and approved by the city attorney. Councilor Vincent. Now is the time. Yes. I'd like to... <laughs> suspend council rules for a second reading and if i may ask the clerk to add my name to the uh sponsors you, you, you may do both thank you the magic that can happen here so uh councilor vincent moves that resolution 14-25 that council rules be suspended for a second reading this evening seconded by councilor barry uh discussion on waiving of council rules council uh, council goodwin yes yeah, sorry uh could we also include 1525 in this motion for council rules which you also you're you're um, at the, so amending both are you looking, 1425 uh, and 1525 to waive council rules on both this and the next resolution yes he's good with that you're good with that councillor barry so the motion it, to waive rules is for resolution 14-25 and has 15 maybe just by title only for the second reading it's always by title only yeah second reading is always by title only. that's correct uh, so the motion before us is to suspend council rules for a second reading on resolution 14-25 and resolution 15-25. Further discussion on the suspension of council rules. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Council rules are suspended. Uh, City Clerk, for a second reading on resolution 14-25 by title only. Resolution 1425 to authorize the city manager to contract with Engrenice and Sons Inc. of Salem, Massachusetts for the rehabilitation of 23 manhole structures on High Street. Resolution 14-25 having been read a first and second time is now before you for amendment. No amendment being offered. The chair will entertain a motion on resolution 14-25. Councilor, you're recognized. No. You're not recognized. Councilor Goodwin. I'll make a motion to adopt. Councilor Goodwin moves to the adoption of resolution 14-25, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion. Um, my question is, you're, you're, si signing a, oh. you're signing a contract to do the work, and yet you have to have a public hearing to get the funding, and not saying it would happen, but if the consensus of public comment and or counselors was to not fund this project um, it seems contradictory to have signed the contract and then not be able to fund it so as reported out in my uh, committee report uh, by adopting this resolution we are in fact uh, obligating ourselves to funding it uh, in some manner, way, shape, or form, uh, the way that has been suggested is the supplemental appropriation as outlined in ordinance number 9-25. You are correct. It is a little bit uh, out of order, but it's because of the, the timing of this and the need to get the work done by, what was it, November 15th, I think the city manager reported. So it is a little unusual, certainly doable, but I think council does need to recognize that we're sort of locking ourselves in i would liken it to every now and again during the budget process we pre-authorize the purchase of certain city vehicles it's then locking us into finding a way to fund those right so it's it's a bit of cart before the horse but, but that's a that is a different process when you're talking the budget you're I'm going to vote in favor of it because I agree with it, but I just thought that that should be brought out that you're not funding it until after you've already signed the contract. Yeah. 
And again, with the police cruises, I don't know if it's that much different. It's still an ordinance. It still has a public hearing, uh, and it typically drags out even longer. So uh, I don't know as though I agree that they're different. But further discussion, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. So, uh, yeah, boy, aren't these, uh, aren't these uh, covers a mess? As we drive down High Street, uh, we're, it's brutal on our vehicles, the residents, the visitors. Um, uh, one question I do have, and I think I know the answer, but I want the public to know it also, is that there'll be hinged covers. We did discuss that at committee, and they will be the new hinge-style covers. So this is my opinion with hinge covers. Um, they're more solid than um, a loose cover that just lays on there. Uh, they're quieter. Uh, there's no stuff that I think has to be put on to quiet when you run them over. Um, and I just think they last longer because they're, they're like a solid unit. And I will be in favor of this. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilor Berry. Um, I'll just state one of the things that when we were going over this in committee that I was concerned about was, is this going to cause more damage before we get to plowing and other things? And it was because uh, I'm not one to spend money on something and then turn around in a couple months and have to redo it. But it was explained to me in length, and you did mention it, that this would help with the plowing. It would cause less damage if we can get it done now. So I will be in favor of this due to that. Further discussion? Seeing none, if you're in favor of the resolution, you'll signify by saying uh, yes. If you're opposed, you'll signify by saying no. <laughs> City Clerk, if you'd please call the roll. Councillor Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Mishu? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. And Barry? Yes. Resolution 14-25 is adopted. Thank you, everyone. Brings us to resolution 15-25 for its first reading, City Clerk. Resolution 15-25, to authorize the City Manager to accept easements from the American Legion Post 69 associated with the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project, October 7, <coughs> 2024. Whereas the city is reconstruction, reconstructing constitutional way as part of the complete streets program detailed in the annual capital improvement program. And whereas as part of the complete streets project, the city will be installing ornamental lighting on both sides of the street. And whereas on the east side of the street, the city will need approximately four easements to install the ornamental lighting in locations that will allow the city to properly maintain the sidewalk during winter operations. And whereas the easements are permanent easements acquired from the American Legion post 69 on property located on Constitutional Way with a parcel ID of 10-168. Now therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to accept the aforementioned easements associated with Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project, sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Martin Pepin, Richard Mishu, Laura Berry, and approved by the City Attorney. Uh, council rules having been suspended, uh, City Clerk will have a second reading on Resolution 15-25 by title only. Resolution 15-25 to authorize the city manager to accept easements from the American Legion post 69 associated with the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. Uh, resolu resolution 15-25, uh, having been read first and second time, is before council for amendment. Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion on the resolution. Make a motion to adopt. Councilor Pepin moves for the adoption of the resolution, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Discussion. Councilor Parity Catton Zero. Uh, just out of curiosity, I, I heard it mentioned that um, the Citizens Bank side didn't want to play ball, for lack of a better word. Um, are these uh, easements going to be enough to light that entire sidewalk, or how are we dealing with the Citizens Bank chunk? Yes, uh, the city uh, engineer reported out at committee, and I asked the other committee members to jump in if I mischaracterize this, that there's adequate lighting from the lights on the other side of the street uh, that are be washing over. There's also a pole mounted light uh, that lights the mm. parking lot there uh, that cast a fair amount of light in that area. Uh, so she was very comfortable that the corridor would be well lit. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Goodwin. It's more of a general comment, but 
It's a complete street project, so it's a complete rebuilding of all the infrastructure, subterranean and surface of the street. Um, why was this not caught in design? Uh, this you could have accommodated moving the curb slightly to make adequate space on the sidewalk. It just is a little disappointing that uh, we're have this sort of cobbled together a bit reasonable solution, but um, should have been designed properly from the beginning. Well, defer to the city manager if he has any comment on that. No, no I, I, at the end of the day, that what we did have discussion at committee level about moving the curbing to accommodate that, but that would have been a significant added cost as the yeah. drainage structure after the fact. Why it wasn't caught during the design on paper, if you will, uh, your guess is as good as mine, Councillor. So. Further discussion? Seeing none, if you're in favor of the resolution, you will signify by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Councillor Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Eridi Catanzaro? Yes. Mishu? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Barry? Yes. Thank you. Resolution 15-25 is adopted. Uh, brings us to agenda item other. Um, First agenda item of other is A, the Eversource Pole Replacement Program discussion. Again, I asked for this to be placed on the agenda in anticipation we'd be sending a letter to Eversource and the PUC outlining our displeasure with Eversource. Uh, apparently, council chambers are bugged because they obviously hurt us uh, and have responded, uh, as we heard read uh, in the letter. It would be my opinion that we sit on any communication to Eversource and or the PUC for the time being, uh, keep the draft letter up on the shelf, if you will, and see if Eversource comes true on its promises and obligations as outlined in the letter and as articulated by city staff. I agree. Is there any objection to that? Let me start with that. I'm seeing no objection, so we'll let that matter rest for the time being. Uh, and see how they do so and I would appreciate city staff just keeping us apprised of what actions they are or importantly are not taking with regard to what they've promised uh, brings us to B which is a vote to confirm the proposed Hamilton Street water tank uh, replacement location as recommended by committee is location 3 which is adjacent to the existing uh, tank Councilor Gibson um. Will that affect the building that's there at all, or is it far enough back so that it won't interfere? Without objection, I'd like Director Babinski to be able to field that question. I know he's been working closely with Wright Pierce and our city engineer on that. So without objection, Director Babinski, thank you. Evening, members of council. Um, the question was about the uh, structure, the rec building. Is that mm -hmm. the specific question? Uh, it's not anticipated that that would be affected by by location number three. Okay. Um, it it is within the vicinity of the existing tank. Details still need to be worked out in terms of the exact place on the face of the earth where that's going to go. But uh, it would not have an impact on the on the building okay. itself. I was just wondering because if you're leaving the old tank there and you're putting something adjacent to it, and it's going to be a golf ball. Oh, right. It's going to be a huge golf ball. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fair to say the new tank will likely look bigger and loom bigger than the existing one for obvious reasons. Too. Exactly, and I, I think similar to uh, what was mentioned earlier this evening, it will look very similar, or at least the proposal, very similar to the one on uh, Indian Brook uh, Lane or Drive in Dover. It will, that, that elevated steel tank mm -hmm. is, is the thinking that at this time that we would go with. Okay, Councilor thank Goodwin you. and Councilor Vincent. Thank you. Um, is there an understanding of um, additional costs that would be incurred by site two? And the reason I ask is uh, I think there's some charm to the existing, you know, riveted steel tower. It, you know, not the prettiest building on the planet by any means, but I think there's going to be significantly less charm with the new building, uh, 
structure and that it sounds like it's going to be even bigger and putting it at a uh, intersection of two streets, particularly the terminus end, so you're coming up the hill and you're just gonna see this water tower. I just think it is uh, gonna be unsightly in a way that's gonna be difficult to, um, to soften. Uh, for passers-by and or uh, residents nearby. And I think the number two location does a much better job of utilizing existing mature trees to soften uh, what is going to be a, a very large structure in a residential neighborhood. So I'm curious if we have an understanding of the costs of uh, additional costs of relocating uh, skate park if we even, you know, this if we even need to relocate it, I don't know how, how heavily utilized it is. It's not the most complicated skate park I've ever seen. We, we haven't uh, dived into that specific cost. I think our, our goal recently was to get a barometer of the council committee on the, on the four choices that, that was laid out. The issue about relocating the skate park, um, to be sure, has its own um, uh, background in terms of where we would relocate that. I think there was a sense that the skate park was still needed, you know, in, in our community. So then the question is, where would you locate that? On the location of number three. It's right uh, there. Can, can I, uh, Manager Belmore, do you have some further input on the question? Yeah, I'm wondering if this can be deferred to the next council meeting on the 21st and we can try to dig into some of those costs. Uh, the good news is the skate park wasn't built with LWCF grant money. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is good news. And perhaps um, if the cost isn't too high and the, and the full council likes the idea uh, of a different location, you know, might go into our plan of utilizing Mallee Farm and expanding um, recreational, recreational activities down there. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I will say that location two, I think, if I recall, committee conversation was probably the, the second most favorable site up there. Um, who knows if we have to take some trees down to do that. And I mean, it, 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 there's one thing begets the next. Um, again, just thinking out loud, maybe we need to, 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 to defer this vote uh, <coughs> to the future. Uh, I, for one, would not support the skate park at the Mallee Farm. Uh, it would get no use down there. It gets a fair amount of use where it is. Um, it's just too far away. So yeah. there's a parcel on Winter Street available. <laughs> there is. <laughs> That's a good point. Try getting back up. Uh, Councillor Vincent and Councillor Parity Catton. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, if if we're going to defer, um, maybe we can have maybe a map of where so all the councillors can see it. Yeah, okay. Right okay, they did. Okay, you got it. Okay. Um, so maybe uh, we do. You, is there a height on this that's different than the other one? Uh, yes, and in uh, we can provide if you would like a rendering of what that might look like. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's what I mean. I yeah, I get certainly. the down view, but it'd be nice to yeah, be able to. We certainly can do that. You know what I mean? Uh, and then I have other questions I'll talk to you about after. Thank you. Sure. Councilor Parity Cat and Zara. Um, yes, just building on that request, if we are going to look at it, it appears. Um, you know, I'm just looking at circles here, but it, it looks like there's plenty of space there. Um, and it also appears that maybe site three could be where the state par skate park goes. So I just also would be curious to see, can it fit there currently? I'm, I'm, I'm sensing uh, desire by council to defer this to the next meeting. Uh, if we do have a public works and environment committee meeting in between, we could vet it out a little bit further. But if I'm hearing counselors correctly, we'd like a sort of a rendering of what the tank could potentially look like. Certainly. We've referenced yeah. one, what might yeah. that look like, uh, what the cost of relocating the skate park might be, you know, uh, more than, you know, back of a envelope mm -hmm. cost estimate, mm -hmm. you know, so okay. maybe, you know, find out what we paid for it back when and apply appreciation cost to it or something of that nature. Um, uh, just a quick point of order or, uh, or request, I suppose. Uh, rendering, sure, great. Um, I think the uh, specific that I would find helpful is an elevation of the existing and the proposed just for scale yep. to see width and height how the proposed compares to sure. the existing. Yeah, we can provide that. Great, thanks. All right. So without objection, we'll defer this until the next meeting uh, under other and perhaps flush it out a bit more at committee level as has deemed appropriate. So, thank you. Very good. Thank you.
that brings us to agenda item number 17, which is closing comments by visitors. Are there any closing comments by visitors this evening? Great. Seeing none, uh, I will then move to closing comments by council members. I'll be rather straightforward. I'll start with Ward 1, Councillor Pepin. Uh, I've talked enough tonight. Uh, no comment. Then. Uh, Councillor Vincent, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, very good. Councillor Gibson. Let's keep a trend going. Very good. Councillor Parity Catanzaro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a note for the uh, GovOps, which is going to take up the public notices petition, um, that we have talked about this a little bit on the um, Community Outreach and Communications Committee. Um, there is already a process of public notices being mailed out to um, committee members and counselors, so just offer that to inform the, the recommendation of, you know, there is a mechanism in place, hopefully, to provide those public notices, notifications. Um, and just wanted to mention, I talked with a resident um, at length last week about dogs at large, which is how we refer to it in the um, in our city ordinances. Um, we I got some helpful information from uh, the chief and the police department. We don't have a leash law per se, but there is certainly um, a prohibition of letting your dogs just roam free off your property. Um, in several places, this has been brought up as an issue to people walking or running by and um, getting, you know, attacked or, you know, at least threatened uh, by folks that are not leashing their dogs. So this may be something that, um, or this is something that I would like the mayor to figure out, you know, which uh, committee could discuss that, but I also just wanted to remind folks, please uh, appropriately leash or fence or invisible fence your dogs on your property. Thank you, Councillor. And again, I know the mayor, if he's not watching now, will watch the rerun, and I'm sure he'll refer that to the appropriate committee as he sees fit. Perfect. Thank you. That's all for me. Councillor Mishu. I'll restart the streak. Nothing this evening. Very good. <laughs> uh, Councillor Goodwin. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief. I think that w one question or comment just to throw out there for uh, the manager and staff is um, coming down <clears throat> Continental Way today, I was, I guess, a little surprised to see either the road open or not um, additional measures for uh, sediment control, I suppose is the best word for it. Uh, there was just mud streaked all the way up. Um, uh, high street and you know when it dries tomorrow it's going to be dust um, and usually there's you know well, some sort of protocol to minimize uh, that sort of migration of uh, disturbed soils uh, off of construction sites so I would I would nudge the contractor to perhaps do a little bit better on that front because I'm sure our downtown businesses will not appreciate uh, the dust storm that is coming tomorrow and it's unsightly today as mud thank you very good Councilor Cameron thank you Anna um, just a thought going back to the skate park for a minute, what possibility to look into maybe up at Millennium, just as a thought somewhere up in that area. Um, uh, next, Don't Trash Summersworth is going to be October 19th from 2 to 3. We're going to meet at Idlehurst School parking lot and we're going to work around Stackpole Road in that area. And I know it's a little early to talk about Christmas, um, but it is just around the corner. So something that's going to be coming back to the city is going to be the Christmas decorating contest. I'm going to be partnering with the chamber, so be on the lookout for information to come. There's going to be a first, second, and third place prize. I've already got the first place nailed down, and we're hoping to get this off the ground this year again. Thank you, Bonnie, and I look forward to seeing your houses decorated. I almost gathered you out of order because I thought it was a little early to talk about that, but I was, was nice. Why. So there that you was go. Why. Councilor Barry, you're recognized. I will follow the trend and say no comments at this time. <laughs> Very good. And uh, I as well have no comments this evening. Uh, any uh, future agenda items, certainly you can uh, see the mayor or the city clerk and get those added to the agenda. There is no non-public session this evening. Chair will entertain a motion on adjournment made by Councillor Vincent, seconded by Councillor Goodwin. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. <clears throat>